All right, now we've done it. Welcome to today's Educator Spotlight Series. Today's my guest is Sarah Gile, a career exploration and Spanish teacher with Lowell Community Schools in the middle school. Sarah, welcome. Thank you, glad to be here. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, Today's topic is going to be about career readiness as a middle school elective. Mm -hmm. um, I know in Kent County here in the Grand Rapids area, uh, just personally, have this is my eighth year here. I know of a couple of school districts who have a middle school elective course. Honestly, I think you were the first that I'd heard who had done it. And when that opened up, I was really curious about that because it's something I've been talking about. We need to be doing more, embedding more career readiness not just at the high school, but even at the middle school level. And then all of a sudden I heard from one of the administrators at Lowell saying, hey, we're gonna be opening a uh, career readiness class. I'd like you to talk to Sarah. And so you got voluntold or maybe volunteered. I don't know, you can, so was it a voluntold or volu uh, volunteered? Um, kind of a little bit of both. I, I enjoy creating and inventing classes. And so I started Spanish here 24 years ago in Lowell. And my principal said, hey, how would you like to do, you know, an exploratory class? Um, you kind of brainstorm one and we'll go from there. And I was kind of geared towards um, diversity. I was thinking in terms of that. And then he said, well, we really kind of want to do a career readiness. Would you consider doing that? And, and I thought, well, I can incorporate you know, obviously, um, diversity and acceptance and um, experience in the workplace, how it's beneficial. So I said, sure, I'll, I'll go ahead and dive in and planned it all the summer, hoping that they didn't tell me I wasn't going to teach it when I came back in the fall. Right. That's right. And then at that point, that summer, you reached out to me and you um, had, I don't know if somebody at the, at your office had said you should reach out to us, or I think it was that, that's again a lack of sometimes communication. I think somebody may have mentioned it to you, but I think you also just came across some of our resources and said, yeah. "Hey, I was looking on your website and you have some some cool things." And that's when we connected. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually did start researching right away. I mean, there's so much out there now for materials. Not always a lot for middle school age, mm -hmm. but um, I did look at the ISD first. To once I realized that they had, you know, someone that was in charge of career readiness and started kind of planning my outline of how I wanted to structure the class from that. Sure. All right. So you were tasked and asked to do uh, an elective class mm -hmm. at your middle school to do career readiness. Did you see anything else? I could be wrong, but did you see anything else in the Grand Rapids area or even maybe across the state where anybody was doing stuff around career readiness at the middle school level? At the high school level, yes. At the middle school, I have not. I'm starting mm -hmm. to see more from... Um, different publicists, different um, companies that are starting to incorporate more for middle school age, but as far as school districts and um, not really. And I've looked, I, I mean, I look even at different, I've looked at different states and just to see, to see what they have. And there's not a lot yet for middle school. Got it. So tell us a little bit about the demographics of your school and the makeup, because obviously not everybody in here is from the Grand Rapids area. Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about Lowell, what type of school district it is, and even how your middle school is, is uh, your curriculum or your, your course schedule is like? Okay, so our middle school is pretty rural. It's starting to get a little bit of diversity, but we're um, about half hour outside of Grand Rapids, headed towards Lansing, about 45 minutes from Lansing, half hour from Grand Rapids. Um, so we are around schools that are a little bit more inner city, but we're still mainly rural, a rural school. Um, the kids have six classes a day. One is an advisory period where they can get extra help with classwork, with um, being absent. Um, and yeah. And you're also on a trimester schedule, is that correct? Correct. correct. Okay, so they're also on that. So when this class came about, is it a required class for students? Is it, is it truly an elective? How many? What percentage of your students uh, considering doing a trimester are taking this class? Mm -hmm. Well, pretty much at middle school age, we just assign them classes unless they're signing up for a high school level course. Um, but the kids were told about the class. I was, I knew just having taught so long that if it's going to be an exploratory, it had to be interactive. It had to be something, you know, that excited the kids that kept them involved. Um, 
so I do a lot of different hands-on activities with them. Um, just to, and the, I've, I've got pretty good numbers. I've got pretty high numbers in the class. I'm still, like I said, teaching seventh grade Spanish and eighth grade high school Spanish, so it's three preps, uh -huh. but um, I have quite a few students in them. And So how many sections do you have then per trimester? Of this I have two sections and this is my second year doing it. Okay. So okay. I, yeah, I'll have six classes a year. Six classes of this, mm -hmm. considering two, okay, great. So this is pretty, Pretty decent number it, with eighth grade students. Would you say you would get half, more than half of the student population? I would say half to more than half. Okay. Um, a lot of times it is, I mean, I have all the students, whereas some classes, if you're doing love language classes, um, you have a different subset of kids, but I have all of them. Okay. Or almost all of them. <clears throat> so, so you're going to sign this program to start doing some stuff around career readiness you literally are just researching on your own because you're starting from scratch um and then you have doing a little bit of work and you have your kids coming in for the first time so what were some of the things that you as doing a little research said like i definitely you mentioned diversity you wanted to touch base mm -hmm. about that what are some of the things that you like felt like these are some must-haves to get started um, well, I had to have an outline, a structure of how I wanted to gear it. And at this age, you know, middle school is a challenging age. So one of the most important things is I wanted them to find meaning in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a class where they don't have to, I have them take lots of assessments, but they're fun assessments to see what their personalities are, what their interests are, what their learning styles are, what their brain dominance is. And um I, I explained to them that, you know, unlike other tests and assessments, this one, there's no right or wrong answer because it's all about them. Mm -hmm. So because of that and because of the age, that's a big appeal to them. You know, okay. I think it's focused 100% on them. Now, do you use a tool like, um, are you a, um, are you even familiar? Are you a um, Zello school, if I'm not mistaken? Do you? Yes, we do use Zello. Um, the counselors are required by law in Michigan to have their students complete an EDP, uh, Educational Developmental Plan. And so the counselors and I sat down, I think, as well as with you, Eric, and we said, mm -hmm. okay, six or counselors are doing this. And then I try to fill in the gaps of the lessons that they didn't get to. Particularly, I found that I'm really focusing because they're eighth grade on transitioning from middle school to high school and then beyond for them to start, you know, kind of thinking about that. And a lot of times they don't know necessarily what they want to do, but we talk about how they can um, at least cross off what they know they're not interested in at all. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that, uh, about the helping to cross off. So what type of research I could doing? Because they already do their Zello. Do they not do the Zello, um, like the interest inventory and those things? Do they do that in your class? Or they do that in a separate class? And then how does that work with what you're trying to do? The counselors push into classrooms and will set up certain um, inventories with the kids through Zello. I use Zello myself. I use a program called EverFi, which is put out free by Mass Mutual. Um, I've gleaned materials from the ISD. Um, there's a company called AES, American Education Services, I believe it is, that has a really good program. I've looked into um, Junior Achievement, Blast from the Past, but that's something I've looked into um, researching as well as I work with the Rotary Club in our community. So that's a good way to get real life people with jobs in the community to come in and talk to the classes. Right. So you go go ahead and mention a couple of assessments. So beyond then what they do in Zello, mm -hmm. what are some of the assessments that you have them do that might? Um, I have them actually just did some today. We do the um, Trent Smiley Mint Personality Test. I always try to give them at least two assessments because we talk about how one assessment on a test or on a math test would not necessarily determine their whole you know, career as a math student. So we talk about how um, if you're getting the same results with two or three quizzes, you know, assessments on yourself, then maybe there's something to it that you're not aware of, just to have mm -hmm. them start realizing that there, there are, especially at this age. That's why we kind of assign them things because they don't necessarily know what they may be good at yet. So we kind of yeah. introduce a lot so they can choose. 
So the kids try uh, a couple different systems, assessments, try to figure out what they're interested in. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I'm just going to put you on the spot. What are some of the things that you've tried with the kids that have been, lack of a better word, didn't go over very well? Well, I have used the EverFi program, which I really like. However, um, I felt like they were on the computers a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. And with that, you know, especially middle school age, you know, then I'm having to watch the spyware all the time rather than, you know, doing more hands-on things with them. So I've switched it up a little bit. Um, like this age, I feel it's it's okay to mention a resume, but it gets a little bit too involved. So I just kind of scratch the surface of all of it and try to give them a big picture of, you know, what is possible, what is out there, what resources. Um, but yeah, the the computers were a little bit too much. So I've kind of switched to focusing on soft skills. I feel like they've okay. lost a lot during the pandemic of socialization skills and employability skills. And that is, you know, um, all encompassing for their future, no matter what path they're going to pursue. Well, that's a great, okay, great comment right there about the soft skills. And so I'm going to actually just pose this and you can put this in the chat or at any point, if you have a question, you can just unmute yourself and say, hey, I have a question, but I would love for anybody who are, is here participating today, um, what is your, regardless of your role, you might say, hey, I'm a counselor or I'm a classroom teacher, um, what are you finding? And, you, and while we're continuing our conversation, we'll just continue it, but I'll look for the comments. What are you finding in your classrooms or as counselors and the students you're working with? Um, what struggles are you finding when it comes to those employability skills? Because what Sarah just said, those soft skills, employability skills are lacking. I completely and utterly agree. And I talk to employers all the time saying they're lacking, not just from middle school students, not just from high school students, but I talk to employers who say college graduates, it's a lacking from college graduates. I've had employers say that I have college graduates who can't look me in the eye or shake my hand. I have had, I know this is hard to believe, I have talked to employers who have said they've had a parent come with them to the interview not just one. Yep. I know. I know. This is, I know this is a funny face, but it's true. Mm -hmm. Parents come into the interview. I've read in books before where they have said, not only do parents come to the interview, but some parents are actually doing the talking at the interviews. So we have taken away the skill for students to be um, self-motivated, perseverance, grit, all those things to be self-advocates. And now they're not even prepared to go to their own interviews. So if you have something to add into the chat, please go ahead and add a comment or a question you have regards to that. Or I'd love to hear, are you seeing the same things in your schools where kids are lacking those types of skills. I'll give a quick pause if anybody has a quick question for Sarah, and then I'll jump back into some more questions. Okay, in the meantime, I'm gonna go back to the question that we were talking about employability skills. Tell me a little bit more about that. I'm in a hundred percent agreement that kids are struggling with mm -hmm. dealing with those skills. So tell me what it is that you do with them around these skills. Because I have had teachers say, I teach them employability skills all the time. I tell them they need to be more responsible. <laughs> well, telling kids they need to be responsible is not teaching employability skills. So tell me what you do. I incorporate a lot of resources from Teachers Pay Teachers. I do a daily dilemma with them which is just a, like a warm up on the board where I will pose a question and how they would handle that mm -hmm. um, in a work situation, how they would handle it in a school situation. I constantly compare school as their job before their job. So they mm -hmm. see the, the similarities and how, you know, it does serve a purpose. You have to get up on time. You have to, you know, use your time wisely. You have to persevere. You have to work in a group, even if, and we talk about introverts and extroverts and how that all works. Um, I have them do, so the daily dilemmas, I also have them do, um, we do survival challenges and um, escape rooms for some of the critical cool. thinking and problem solving. Um, I have them do interviews, mock interviews with each other. They fill out practice applications, just blank. Um, and then they sit and interview each other on a program called Flipgrid. And so they have to ask the questions and they have to respond to the questions. And it's really good practice for them also to be on a camera and see what their mannerisms are. Are they making eye contact? Are they fidgeting with stuff? Um, a lot of them don't have many skills with 
verbal, just speaking to people rather than typing on a computer or texting on their phone. So it's really important for them to still have that. I talked to them about how um, if they're interviewing with someone my generation, they're going to have to, you know, or older, mm -hmm. they're going to have to have different sets of skills depending on their audience. So. Yep, absolutely. And we've got a couple of comments in here that I think I would second. Um, we see in terms of um, what they're noticing in schools as far as uh, lack of some skills and once a lack of basic social skills, grooming, showing up late, agreed. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody else says, I see a lack of follow through and completing tasks. Attendance mm -hmm. is one. Mm -hmm. um, one says, I teach high school pottery and sculpture classes. A major deficit is soft skills. I see is knowing how to wait for their turn and waiting to get help, waiting for others. So waiting for other people in general, right? To finish mm -hmm. up their question and cutting people off and trying to speak. I, I, I thought this part was really interesting, Melanie, when I read what you said, the need to feel to leave school early and a lack of coping skills when they're facing a difficult mm -hmm. challenge. So um, obviously we see a lot of focus on SEL. Is there some SEL stuff that you're able to bring into these employability skills or do you see overlap between teaching these skills and mm -hmm. SEL? Oh, definitely, definitely. I actually utilize some some resources from Teachers Pay Teachers. It is uh, the growth mindset posters um, and just you know going over that. And I incorporate a bunch of activities where they're using critical thinking, they're using problem solving, they're using teamwork, they're using, you know, we talk about even the definitions. We assume sometimes, especially I think at this level, that kids know what employability skills mean. Correct. I have questions like, what is punctuality? Um, today it was, what is sentimental? They were doing quizzes today about their personalities, and we were doing the um, Trent Smalley quiz and another one, and, you know, just the, even the vocab you know, is, is enriching for them to hear, you know, what are these words? If they don't know what the words are, they can't relate to it. They can't understand it. So we go through that and just even them using their own knowledge and opening up a tab and looking up, what does this word mean? Um, is a good, you know, skill for them to learn. Yep. Yep. Um, a couple more comments that came in. Pamela says, as a therapist, I see a lot of social anxiety holding students back from both applying and functioning within a job. It's true. Jeremy said, um, some students only want to do what's required. Uh, for instance, seniors that are 22 credits and eight, but they can get 24. They're like, well, I've already got enough to graduate, so I don't care if I get an E. I, I definitely see that too, um, to everybody who's making comments. Um, that's why we talk um, for those, I've mentioned this before, because I'm very big in the employability skills, very passionate about that, teaching these kids these skills. For those who watched Hard Knocks in this uh, summer when the Lions were, um, on hard knocks this year. I remember the coach got up in a back wall. What all said was the word grit, you know, which is essentially perseverance, right? Teaching kids perseverance in these skills. Um, <laughs> somebody popped in there. Didn't they? Um, I did see a question that came in. Um, uh, any chance that you do have resume resources that you use trying to build resources? And I thought you'd mentioned maybe you didn't do a whole lot around um, resumes. We, I don't do a lot specifically with resumes at this age, but they do have on Zello a program that helps them create a talent portfolio as well as a resume. And so mm -hmm. when at the end of the trimester, when I'm trying to, we go over the kind of the transition to high school and picking out your classes, we talk about how I show them in Zello, how they can utilize that from here throughout to put any, you know, it's got a spot where they can put in experiences, volunteer work um and so and they have them printed out and it's all it's uh, titled all about me and it shows them kind of their progress of zello thus far and okay. zello goes from i think well i know sixth grade we use it up through 12 i'm not sure about elementary level they, they, they have some elementary resources okay. for those who pay extra for it um i thought so somebody did would somebody have a question on there i want to make sure another question added to that or wasn't quite sure I wasn't sure if someone was about to make a comment. Um, regarding the um, skills and employability skills, definitely um, agree with that. What are some of the things that the you've done in the class that the, has really resonated well with the kids that like kids like were was an aha? I mean, we're talking about eighth graders, right? So let's face it, they're they're still just figuring it out. But I think eighth graders recognize too. There's like, some, even at the age, engagement is going down, statistics show, and they're mm -hmm. feeling like school is not as relevant. So what are some of the things that you've done with the kids that like, the kids really got their into and well, enjoyed? 
I have brought in, I try to bring in at least 10 guest speakers per mm -hmm. trimester. Um, who's better for them to hear from than people who are in the industry doing jobs. Ideally, mm -hmm. if I can find people that are closer to their age group, it works a little better. I've had my mm -hmm. nephew who is a junior at U of M come in. I had, and I asked the kids and they're happy to, you know, have family come in and it forms also that, um, you know, that community uh, closeness, close knitness with the parents and they get to see them an opportunity. And then we talk about how also people might be really good at certain jobs, but they're, they do not like to speak in front of large crowds of people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we discuss how do you overcome those fears and, you know, um, and a lot of people, parents, as a teacher, I, I, I'm always like, well, bring in some visuals for them to see, you know, yeah. I don't want to tell them to bring swag, but if they haven't, <laughs> love it, you know, sure. um, I had one year, a woman who runs a huge dairy farm and brought in string cheese and cow tattoos for them to put on and they loved it. Um, <laughs> I had someone who's a cleaner, they clean schools and they gave them all um little Kleenex or not little cloths to clean glasses and their phones on their mm -hmm. their screens on their phones and they were over the moon excited because they had something free so it doesn't uh, take much to excite them I get you no 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 uh food's always a good motivator but actually I do sign up genus with parents that that seem to be easiest and then I put the link in my google classroom and they can sign up for what slot they want and um well, I'm glad you brought that up because that's something that I do in my role is to work with some of my uh, locals like yourself and others who are saying we would love to have guest speakers come in, but they struggle because they don't know what to do or how to do that. I think uh, kind of as an aside, you just, in your role, you've already said several guest speakers. And I have some people struggling to find one or two, but I think you just gave a couple of tips and strategies on how to go about doing that. People are really struggling with, I don't know how to bring anybody in, but you mm -hmm. said you, you've had your nephew come in. So you bring in you reach out to people in your own network and you said you it made it sound like you've reached out to parents as well to try to connect oh, and yeah. bring parents, in parents, staff. We have staff, you know, that have spouses that have different jobs. Um, I've had high school teachers that came, recently came back to the middle school, tell them about what the, what high school is like and signing up for high school classes and depending on what path, yeah. what path they're choosing. Um, but yeah, the guest speakers is probably the kids favorite and the most relevant. I have had the one that they love is a U.S. Deputy Marshal, and he brings in, you know, all of his SWAT gear. And um, I try to, you know, appeal. We had one that is a, he designed parts for a, for the Fast and Furious, the stock car is in there. Okay. And so, of course, a lot, I had a lot of kids that were excited. It's great to see them. I've had parents that were police officers that handcuffed their kid and, you know, <laughs> took them out of my class. But the kids love to see and they're proud to have their parents, which is a nice way too to have that involvement. And um well, we send let, me, out, let me go ahead. No, go ahead. We send out, I work on thank you letters. So we talk about how after they we've had a guest come, you know, it's it's polite to I I send them a thank you with our letterhead from Lowell Area Schools. And then I have a little thank you card that all the students sign. And I explained to them that that for some people is proof that they're, you know, that they were working today, but they were doing a different aspect of work. And so we just talk about, um, you know, the formalities that you should, common manners that you should use if you're interviewed or if someone, you know, comes uh, in. That was, well, that was going to be one of the questions. What do you do to prep these kids for having guest speakers and to make sure it's valuable for the employer too to feel like it was worth their time? So then it's, they're not distracting or whatever, but the kids are engaged. Do you do some, like, do they prep by having some questions ahead of time mm -hmm. that they're supposed yeah. to ask? So, yep, I have a set of questions and a lot of the guest speakers are, you know, nervous and they're, what, what am I supposed to say? And um, so I talk to the students and that even in itself, them hearing their parents, you know, or whoever they're having come in that's kind of nervous about it. And, you know, they have to then explain to them, here's a set of questions. So I do have those for the parents that I email. And then I also go over the questions with the students, you know, of what things they would want to know. And then we go through etiquette of don't ask how much someone makes. You can ask the average, but, you know, you don't ask exactly how much they make. And then um, they like to ask, the students love to ask. And one of our daily dilemmas was, 
you're working with a coworker who has very bad breath. And how do you handle that politely and not make it awkward at your work? And so that, of course, was a buzz question that every single guest speaker got after that. And it, was <laughs> interesting. it is middle school. It's interesting yeah. to see though the, the responses with different speakers. Some are very mm-hmm. blunt and some were very, you know, um, meek and meager and yeah. And some probably are just deer in the headlights because they're like, I wasn't expecting that question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so, and, and again, I'm going to pause again just for one second. If anybody has a specific question or saying like, I'm curious about what, you know, hey, our school district would love to have do crew readiness as a middle school elective, or maybe we're exploring it at the high school, but I got X, Y, Z question because we, we don't even know where to start. Does anybody have a question for Sarah? Um, about this process because she literally was doing it from scratch, kind of building it from the ground up. So I'm going to pause for just a second and then follow up with a couple more questions. Or feel free to write into the chat if you have any questions. Okay. If you have some, please put them in the chat, but I'm going to follow up with just a couple more. So here's the thing. The kids are finding some value in this. How would you, um, oh, question Renee says could something be modified for elementary so my question to you her question to you is do you think just as you're doing this for uh, middle school which I think probably a lot of high schools would uh, educators will say like oh I don't know how that fits in the middle school do you see this being as just as much value at the elementary level oh definitely definitely the whole employability skills that's elementary is doing that all the time anyway Mm-hmm. with employability skills and soft and skills. SEL, yep. SEL, yep. yep. And that's the biggest, really. I mean, just teaching them even how to collaborate with others, how to work in a team, how to do a group assignment. Yeah. So and that, Renee, that, I, yeah, I know a lot of people are doing stuff and it's tied to their PBIS standards. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're doing a lot of those employability skills. And um, I, I specifically think that you could do that. Um, a lot of our elementaries that we've been starting to work with are bringing in guest speakers as an easy way or doing a career day or a career vehicle day where they do something around career vehicle vehicles, but it's tied to actually different careers. Um, what has been some of the conversations as a result of this? This is sounds fun and fine, but what's been some of the value, I guess, in terms of doing this class? What do you think the biggest takeaway is for the kids in terms of what they're learning about themselves and learning about potential careers for themselves? Well, my goal is, is that they won't you know, spend a lot of time or money in something that they don't really enjoy. And so we talk even about, you know, what is it that they want? Is money more important to them? Is travel important to them? Is staying by family? So we go into all those aspects. And I think at this age, just letting them know what's out there. I've had high school students who have come back and said, I wish they had this when I was in middle school. And I felt that way with my own two children, because I feel like a lot of times they didn't find stuff out till their sophomore year of high school. Well, then things are kind of so set. Like I have a ton of students who are interested in KCTC. And if I didn't introduce it to them in eighth grade, they wouldn't maybe know about it till their junior year. Well, they have to take it their junior or senior year. Mm. So just letting them know all the possibilities. I have students that already know in middle school that they want to go into, um, the, you know, the services, they want to go into military. And so even knowing kind of how that path works and what that looks like and, you know, where they can find more information when they get in high school. So, yeah. So some of the value, which you just were saying was, is not just telling them about different careers, but do you spend time? It's clear. It sounds like you show them how to go and find information. I think right now in the information age, it's not that they can't get it, they can get it. It's all information's at their fingertips. It's about knowing where to find it. So do you spend some time saying where to go to find information? Hey, you're interested in this career. Let's spend some time researching about that. Mm-hmm. Do kids research careers of interest then? We do. We definitely do. They um I that is probably it's a my main focus really is kind of them figuring out themselves and what they're good at. And then we go into what careers might match that and what skills and we talk about career clusters because a lot of them don't even know what those are and Michigan Mm -hmm. recently added a 17th and different Mm -hmm. states have different you know job positions that they're looking at and different we talk about how there's different income cost of living I don't get too too heavy into that but EverFi does a good job too of um, 
giving them a kind of a sim city and they decide like if they want a roommate, how much they're going to spend in their budget. So even to get them thinking about the financials and whether or not there's someone that wants all the brand names or they're okay with having less, but really enjoying what they do. Um, I also incorporate entrepreneurship. A lot of them don't think about that. They already, mm. a lot of them babysit, animal sit, mow lawns, shovel. So we talk about putting all those experiences onto their Zello or, you know, they're building up their resume of all the different um, That's good. skills and skills that they have. All right. Um, and I know we didn't even get time. You showed me a couple of resources that we could share. Um, I can put that um, as a follow-up to people for some of the resources. Um, when I throw up my screen here in a second, I'll just quickly show them. But I know you use a doc document called Leap. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, my two final questions to you. So number one would be um, high school. So they're in eighth grade going through this value in terms of high school course selection. Has has any of that conversation come up with kids as helping to p decide some of the classes they might be interested in high school based on this class? Meaning, if, hey, I'm interested in doing something in healthcare. They've researched it. I definitely now feel like I want to do something in healthcare. Mm -hmm. And now I need to start taking XYZ classes in high school to make sure that's prepping me for it. You mentioned KCTC as well. Um, and then also um, in terms of uh, just documentation or, or whatever, what is it that they walk away with feeling like that was the biggest value for them in terms of preparation for high school and beyond? Um, well, definitely the prep is the prep for high school. That's their most immediate. So that's, you know, in their forefront the most. Um, a lot of them want to get jobs in high school. So we practice filling out the job applications. But I, yeah, they, we talk about activities that they're involved in. And if they're going to go to college, they're going to want to take certain classes. They're going to want to take AP classes. I have, a, like I said, a high school teacher that comes in and talks to the kids. And then my, some of my guest speakers that are recent high school graduates will talk about what was important for them in high school. Um, I have them talk about some of them, you know, at this age, there's not a lot of activities unless they're athletic. Um, so we look at what our school offers at the high school for clubs. And so when they're filling out, I have them fill out an activity sheet, kind of a brag sheet, I call it, of things they've done. Hmm. And we, I suggest, because some of them, you know, say, well, I don't have anything. And then, and then we look at, there's 37 clubs at the high school. And we look at, well, what do you think you might be interested in? Look at this huge list of all these things that you can do. You know, um, so we go over that and just the difference of if you're going to pursue a skilled trade, what that might look like, what that's going to require for education versus, you know, a profession where you have to have college. And we talk a little bit about how many years of college and do you, if you're someone who doesn't even like getting up for school because it's a struggle, you may not want to do four more years of college, mm -hmm. you know, um, so just all the possibilities that they have. I get more excited <laughs> about that than they do because they have so many yeah. things they can do. For um, sure. Yeah. When, when it's all said, and I've got to wrap it up here, but when they, when it's all said done, have the kids, uh, at least a handful, you know, not all of them, but would some of the kids say like that was a valuable class for them when they're said and done, feeling like they're a little bit more prepared for what's next? Or do they see that tying into helping them think about their future? Or is it just too hard for some of them as eighth graders? No, I think they really do. I think, especially when we talk about how, you know, middle school goes into high school, school is your practice for a job. I think they see more value than, you know, some other subjects where they feel, when am I ever going to use this? Um, what I hear a lot from my students is, why don't they teach us stuff like balancing our checkbook or, you know, things that are real life skills that a lot of them are lacking. Um, sure. So, yeah, I think they definitely feel more prepared, not as nervous. Um, they have lots of questions, which is great. They at least kind of have, I think, a little bit of an idea. And I emphasize they don't have to know exactly, but at least start thinking about what they might be good at, what they might want to do um, in their future. And I've had students, like I said, come back or, well, siblings that have come and said, I wish I had that when I was at sure. middle school. Sure. Well, I, we've run out of time. Unfortunately, I had a couple more questions, but that's a that's kind of the nature of the beast here. What I want to do is throw up the screen one more time here and um, get us back to um, our uh, presentation just to wrap things up here. So let's just see if I can pull that back up here. Where is it at? Is the screen sharing showing? Yep. Back to your, all right, awesome. So I just want to wrap it up by showing that we have a couple more of these educator spotlights. We have one in April with Allison Dykhouse and 
um, a classroom teacher. They're going to talk about merging STEAM, project-based learning, and career readiness at a five-six building. Um, doing it through a STEAM class. They're they're pulling it all together. And then on May eighth, I have Heather Bernard uh, with um, a National Heritage Academies. One of their um, schools is going to talk about a senior success portfolio. Success portfolio. Um, we also have another program on April twentieth, the Career Readiness Network. That'll be in in person uh, on April twentieth. And then one of my colleagues, uh, she does these career chats every Tuesday and Thursday online, similar to this type of a makeup where we have different guest speakers come on every Tuesday and Thursday to talk about different careers. Those are recorded. Um, if you're interested in sharing some of the things that you're doing regarding career readiness, or you would like to nominate somebody to talk about what they're doing that's innovative and creative, um, you can go to this bit.ly bit forward slash spotlight guest and fill that out. And I would love to chat with you and see if maybe that may be a fit for next year bit.ly forward slash spotlight guest. And then uh, finally, here's how you're gonna get your sketches for today. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the chat in just a moment, but bit.ly forward slash ESS hyphen sketch 2022 hyphen 23. That's the bit.ly link. And then the six digit code is 117658, 117-658. Um, And you'll wanna click on the drop down that we are today's session with Sarah Guile talking about career readiness as a middle school elective course. Just wanna say thanks to everybody who attended. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the chat here quickly um, that link, because I'm sure some people missed it. So I'm gonna go ahead and, oops, put the in the chat. Where's it at? Shows my, where's my chat? There it is. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. And that is the link to the bit.ly, the six digit code 117658, and then Sarah Guile's information. Um, Sarah, I just want to say thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Okay. Talking about career readiness um, at the middle school level, I find it to be valuable. Um, I hope that others got something out of this as well today. But um, thanks so much, and we appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you. All right. Have a great day, everybody.